Hi everybody and welcome back to Spiritually Speaking Podcast. Since I have started to show you the Angel Art Diaries, I figured it's only fair if I share the meanings of the crystal shapes so you can begin using crystals and gemstones in the same way I do to help you heal in your life. Stay tuned, I'll be right back. Welcome to Spiritually Speaking Podcast. My goal is to teach you the elements of spirituality that will show you how to find your passion and purpose in life. I'm your host, Lisa Maria. So join me in another session of Spiritually Speaking. Welcome back. Welcome back. Once again, we're here at Spiritually Speaking Podcast. And I am here to show you and teach you the elements of spirituality and how to grow your life starting from seed. Today, I want to start with what crystals are and how and why there are things in them to begin with. So first, I'm going to start with some scientific facts about crystals Then I'm going to share with you what spirit and the angels have taught me about how to use them to show us where we come from and how we can get back to our original being, which is our spiritual being. So let's start with just understanding the form of the crystals. All right, so crystals come in all shapes and sizes some have natural facets and points while others are smooth and round and some form clusters and others just stand alone there's crystals that form in layers and others that form in bubbles but some occur naturally and others are cut to precise shape by man so when you find crystal points for necklaces and things like that online They're not really shaped um, naturally like that. They're shaped by man with a machine. It doesn't take the natural form or the abilities of the crystals away from it. It just is a different shape. And each shape has its own attribute and application. And knowing how to use these different shapes opens up the way to magical possibilities. For example... You can use the ability of quartz to store information like a computer does. Some shapes open a window into another world, past, present, and future, earthly and extraterrestrial, while others attract soulmates or bring abundance into your life. For example, a geode with its cave-like center gathers and holds an energy and releases it slowly while a cluster radiates it out rapidly in all directions. These shape-specific properties are relevant to how you choose and use your crystals. It can make all the difference between the crystal working brilliantly or not at all. A citrine cluster attracts abundance, but it may flow out again. However, the holding properties of a citrine geode enables you to keep hold of your money while a single point directs it into a specific direction. Pretty cool, right? All in all, knowing the properties of the different shapes of crystals, geodes, and points, and being aware of the myriad forms of quartz can help you use those powers to benefit yourself and to benefit others. Quartz-based crystals have naturally occurring facets at their tips, usually being six-sided, which symbolizes the six chakras from the base chakra to the third eye chakra. Then the termination point of the crystal symbolizes the crown and links to the infinite. Now, Don't worry about remembering all this. I know it's a little confusing and sometimes it's easier to actually see what I'm talking about. That's why I created a free crystal guide sheet so you can refer to it and see different crystals and their shapes 
And with that crystal guide sheet, I'm going to give you copies of the pages that show the crystal forms and symbols that can be found in them. So to get this freemium, you can go to www.spiritualonlinecourses.org forward slash free dash resources. That's www.spiritualonlinecourses.org O-R-G, forward slash free dash resources. You can find all the freemiums there that I give out onto these uh, from these podcasts. And my purpose to this podcast is not to give you scientifics about atoms and molecules and things like that, but just to recognize the shapes and markings in them and also share with you how and where they come from. Now, crystals are found in their natural shape, of course, but they can be cut and polished into any shape. Common polished shapes are like a point or obelisk, a spear, an egg, a heart, an angel, a faceted stone, and tumbled stone. Now, tumbled stones are tumbled in a machine with grits in barrels to smooth and polish them and are the most widely available form of many crystals. And they, but now you can also find them in rough or raw form which is their natural shape, okay? But for the purpose of this podcast, I'm going to just use the term crystal, although there's many names that people use to refer to crystals, such as gemstones, minerals, rocks, and stones. I'm just going to use crystals just for the purpose of this podcast. So let me tell you a little bit about where crystals started. Okay, crystals are scattered throughout the literature of ages, including ancient Chinese text and Greek writings, the Ayurvedic text, and the Bible. The Bible alone has over 200 references to crystals and their powers and associations. Crystals have also been found around the world in graves of ancient cultures, including ancient Egypt and the Mayan civilization. Mankind has been aware of the power of crystals for thousands and thousands of years, yet science has yet to explain how and why they work. We know they focus, transmit, transmute, and store energy. Now, I want you to keep what I just said in mind when I tell you about how spirit has taught me. So, like everything in the universe, they vibrate and produce energy. Crystals increase the frequency of light and affect the movement of photons of light. They learn things and communicate information much the same way as radio signals, evolving very healing capabilities to suit changes in their environment. So, basically, they change and suck up energy they learn their environment okay and this is a scientific fact scientists have been intrigued for many years by the theory that crystals have the ability to act as primitive genes okay our bodies hold genes so what is that saying about a crystal so to put that in simple to understand terms crystals hold information Produce energy like a radio signal. Crystals can actually learn things and hold information or transfer or transmute information the same way as radio signals. So with that said, I want to tell you what I was taught by spirit and the angels about what crystals are. So what I did is I asked the angels and spirit to tell me why I could see in the crystals because I only know of one other person and I researched a lot (laughs) but was only able to find and connect with one other person that could actually see and pull the same type of information that I was pulling out of the crystals so I asked them to please show me why 
what was the purpose of them giving us this information? What were we supposed to do with the information they were giving us? That was one of my biggest questions. Well, they brought me to a wonderful book on Amazon. And it's actually free with Kindle Unlimited. So I'm going to give you the name of the book. It's called A Star Seed Guide, Andromeda, Pleiades, and Sirius, Volume 1. It's a wonderful and informative book if you're interested. Again, it's free if you have Kindle Unlimited and there's different volumes to it. This book states that crystals and many other things on earth were used to preserve information on earth. So we would be reminded of who we are, where we came from, as well as the power that we hold within ourselves. In Atlantis, they began to preserve information that could be found by our future selves. They began to foresee that there was a great chance of disconnection between the 3D and the 5D realms. Now remember, we were all part of Atlantis, and those that have the calling to be a light worker is here for this reason. This is why there are many others that are attracted to crystals. So please listen. This is really important for you guys to hear. In Atlantis, our intuition told us that it would be much easier to access information that is carefully hidden within the living earth than to train ourselves to connect with the 5D so we could access the Akashic Records or the Universal Mind. Again, I know this is a lot, but I have it all written out for you in the freemium. So don't worry, this is not going anywhere and I will be continuing to explain it to you more and more. The eyes are the doorway to the soul. The heart is the seat of the soul. And the star human is equipped with the intuition needed to discover all the clues that we have hidden for ourselves. Now, your eyes symbolize the sixth chakra, your heart, the fourth chakra, and your intuition is the second chakra. So don't get confused. It is the feeling of energy that opens the door for seeing the energy. And that's where all three of those chakras have to work together in combination. The great task is to save humanity with the intention of rescuing all the souls and showing them the way home started. With great care to detail, we created time capsules. We created time capsules for ourselves to find now. And the future is now. Okay, we programmed crystals, plants, trees, bodies of water with light codes containing our energy and our memories. The earth became a library of information for us to find. This is why you feel drawn to particular crystals, drawn to places on earth, and drawn to specific places and spending time in nature. You will help trees collect herbs and create magnificent gardens. This is all part of the plan. The light being within you unconsciously remembers the time when you walked on earth in your 5D energy. So I want you to ask, to be led towards the stones, the crystals, or other living beings and things on earth that you have coded for yourself to find in the future. The future is now, and you're ready to access your own energy. Put your bare feet and hands into the earth. Ask to be connected to the ancient knowledge that gave birth to wisdom. Ask questions. Listen with your heart and your intuition for answers before seeing with your physical eyes. The way home is to retract your steps backwards. 
There were not enough of us to change the fate of Atlantis. But we knew that if we prepared and remained patient, we could wait to enter another stellar activation cycle, which is a particular astrological time that allows the Earth realm to be more open to universal energies. That would mass awaken consciousness and those who were ready and rescue those souls by teaching them who they truly are and showing them the past home where everything was love. Now, several of these cycles have passed since, but during the present time, you are fortunate enough to be in one of those cycles again. The 2012 Stellar Activation Cycle opened timelines. Remember when everybody was afraid that uh, 2000 and, uh, you know, uh, was going to end the end, be the end of the world? This is what it was talking about. It was changing, not physically, but spiritually. Okay, the 2012, again, 2012 stellar activation cycle opened timelines. It opened your ancient memories, other realities, and access to parallel lives. And you can now move consciously between the past, present, and future energies, although you just got to be careful not to get lost. The main purpose of looking into past energy is to heal your soul's PTSD to release all emotional hurts and bring healing from our past lives. The healing will enlighten your soul, allowing you to become the writer and creator of your future. Now, when I say you can travel uh, between past, present, and future energies, you do this in your dreams. And that's a whole nother podcast is about dreams, which I think I'm going to do next. But back to Atlantis, the destruction of Atlantis ripped open many dimensions, allowing low vibration energies to gain access and attach themselves to living souls on earth. We fought hard to close those dimensions and remove the parasitic energies that gained entry. This resulted in closing the access to the 4D and 5D and the physical body for all incoming souls. Now, everyone who would answer to the reincarnation cycle would eventually apply to all of us, would have to cross the river, I'm sorry, cross the river of forgetfulness without being allowed to use the Rainbow Bridge. Now, I want you to pay attention to the angel art diary entry that I'm going to bring you this week. Because this is what I had drawn was the river river of forgetfulness. Now this resulted in forgetting who you were and how to get back. The intention was to protect ourselves from self-destruction and soul's suffering on earth. And at that time, the Council of Lights gave us a choice to either leave the earth forever and leave it as it was... And they would induce a complete cleansing, like a whiteout of all species living on and in Earth. Okay, so think of um, Noah's Ark, the flood. Okay, that's basically a cleansing, a complete cleansing. Or they said we could stay, play God, follow Earth's laws, and assist those souls in the evolution without speeding up the process. That's where we are now. That's why some people have started to awaken and some people are still in the lower levels of the awakening process. So one of the earth laws is that what happens to a soul on earth has to be healed on earth. If it happened in the physical body, it has to be healed in the physical body. The catch was that the soul must be willing to be healed. So you must be willing to learn the lessons from the experiences. This is where the law of human free will began. This is where the incarnation cycle 
is if you don't learn in on earth in your physical body you have to come back and redo it again and again now if it has to happen in the physical body that means it happens here on earth right Okay, so now if we cross over with unforgiveness for Uncle Harry or resentment against Aunt Millie and we don't resolve the issue before we die, guess what? You got to come back and do it all over again with the same souls. Every time we cross over without healing and learning the lessons that we need to learn to raise our vibrations, we have to come back and repeat it with the same souls that come back as well because they didn't resolve it with you. You know, um, uh, there's a video I just watched with, um, oh my gosh, I'm going to post a link. I can't remember her name. She does the hypnosis. Oh my gosh, I'm drawing a total blank. Oh, Dolores Cannon. That's it. Dolores Cannon. I'm going to post the link to the video in the show notes because she explains it really, really well about the reincarnation cycle, okay? So, to get to the point after all that, I'm going to have a printout of this podcast for you to download because I just feel like this information is so very important because it's basically telling us how to heal. It's telling us what we need to do to raise our vibrations. We have to forgive others. We have to let go of resentment. We have to move forward in our lives and learn the lessons. We have to stop resisting. Every experience is a lesson, whether it's good or the bad or the ugly. Our past selves <laughs> sent our future selves this information so we could heal. Now, this is why I call the Angel Art Diaries a divine map to find your true purpose in life. Because it is a map. This is what I am being sent and I'm sure many others are being sent as well that might not be aware of it yet. I told, I just told you that our past selves sent us this information in crystals and trees and herbs and other things on earth. So we would know how to get back home, right? Well, I have that map and I'm willing to share it with you free. So you can find your true and divine purpose here on earth. So you don't have to feel lost or like you don't belong here on earth. So you can experience peace. So you can share the findings that I have with your children. So our future generations can live in a more peaceful and loving world. That is the goal is to teach our future generations how to not make the same mistakes as we have, to not live by the programming and the conditioning that society brings. We have to change, people. We have to get this out into the world and teach our children that they do not have to live by society's conditioning. With that said, I'd like to end this podcast with my story of how I first started to see inside the crystals and how the Angel Art Diaries were born. This is an excerpt from my, my book called Nine Amethyst Angels, Connecting and Healing with Angels. So if you want a free copy of that book, you can go to my website at www.spiritualonlinecourses.org and sign up and get a free copy of that book for yourself and, and read all kinds of stuff about connecting with the angels and healing with the angels' signs and messages. So let me begin about my story. It all began with my fascination of gemstones. The energy that warmed the palm of my hand when I held a natural amethyst crystal point healed me. 
I escaped into worlds unbeknownst to me. When the lights sparkled from the crystal quartz, I was able to escape into a world that I always felt like I belonged. They comforted me when I didn't want to think about my illness, the pain I was in, or the problems that I was having at home. I felt deserted by my human friends and my human family when I was diagnosed with reflex sympathetic dystrophy, also known as complex regional pain syndrome, and fibromyalgia and uh, chronic fatigue syndrome, which all left me unable to walk and wheelchair bound for a year. I could no longer do the same things I used to do. All the phone calls stopped. The visits stopped. I felt so alone. But little did I know that I was far from alone. The crystals became my best friends. They were literally a rock that I could lean on. I felt there was much more inside these so-called rocks, as some people referred to them. They are much more than just a rock. They are information-holding time machines. I always loved visiting Space E6 at the Berlin Farmer's Market in Berlin, New Jersey, where they sold all types of rough and tumble gemstones. The owners there were Deb and Peter, and every weekend they set up a table with many different crystals formed in the shape of a pentacle. One day at Deb and Peter's crystals, nine amethyst crystal points caught my eye as they sparkled and shimmered at me with the reflection of the sunlight. It was a sunny day, so I picked up the crystals that directly attracted me and held them up into the shining sun. You could see the outline of angels. Well, at least Peter, Deb, and I could see them. So I said to Peter, Hey, Peter, could you come here and look at this? He stepped from behind the table of crystals and into the sun beside me. Before I could speak a word, he gazed up into the sun, looking through his steel-framed glasses and looking into the sparkling amethyst and said calmly, Yup, there's an angel in there. He yelled over to Deb, saying, Hey, Deb, come over here for a second. She came from behind the crystal jewelry table that sat beside the crystal table. Deb said with a knowing smile on her face, Oh, yeah, you see a lot of that in crystals. I always go through them feeling their energy before I sell them and keep the ones that I want, as she giggled. I did not fully understand what she meant at that time. I knew crystals held energy. But I had no idea what the nine amethysts were about to bring into my life. After seeing the angels in just one amethyst, I purchased all nine amethyst crystals that caught my interest there. Along with the nine amethysts, I purchased a large tumbled malachite, which is great for breaking through layers that lay over top of the heart chakra when it's blocked. A natural crystal quartz point, which is an excellent master healer for anything. A natural rose quartz, which is excellent for love, romance, or any type of relationship issue, including self-love. And a large tumbled snowflake obsidian, which is great for protecting your aura from negative energy. I had a much stronger connection to these crystals compared to other crystals that I had purchased in the past. Not that the previous energy was negative in the other crystals. It just felt different, as if they were meant for me. So I took them home, cleansed them over herbal sage smoke, and started to take photographs of the crystals as I always did. Snap, snap, snap. One after another, I would snap the photos of the crystals in action mode on my camera, so there were no delays between taking the photos. One after another, I captured each speck of light within every one of them. Like a cheerleader twirls a baton, I consistently twirled and flipped the crystals through my fingers so I could catch each fascinating spark of light within the photograph. The glimmers were illuminating. I would examine them like a scientist looking for their next discovery. And to my astonishment, my discovery was found. The crystals not only became a hobby, 
but they became my best friends. I felt the energy, and they felt mine. I connected to them, and they connected to me. It was like they knew what I needed to heal. They were brought to me so they could give me the healing that I needed to move forward towards my life purpose. I knew there was much more to these crystals, but I still wasn't quite sure what it was yet. Then, one day, I was taking pictures of an amethyst gemstone, twirling and flipping the crystals through my fingers, just like I was saying like a cheerleader, and the crystal started to take a different shape through the camera lenses. It started to get a bright lighted shadow around the edge. At first, I thought it was the camera and kept peeking over top of the lens to make sure I wasn't losing my mind and hallucinating. I realized that I was not hallucinating at all and continued to take photos just snapping away with the camera. I saw the crystal continue to take shape. They were shape-shifting into different animal figures. First, it was a wolf. Again, I moved the camera away from my face to be sure I wasn't hallucinating. There wasn't anyone else in the room with me as I spoke out loud. I need to show other people this so I know I'm not going crazy as I continued to take more pictures. So I kept snapping photos one after another and the crystal continued to change into different animals. It was a frog, a rhinoceros, a dog, an elephant, a turtle a rabbit, and then a bear. I was in total awe. Eventually, after snapping many pictures, the amethyst crystal stopped shape-shifting. I excitedly ran over to my computer with the memory card from my camera and began downloading them to my hard drive. The photos showed up on my monitor, and there were the animal shapes. I thought to myself, Yippee! I'm not nuts! I'm not crazy! (laughs) So I yelled for my mom, my son, and his friend. I asked them if they saw the same animal shapes in the photos that I did. And because of my psychic abilities, I didn't know if they would see exactly what I saw. But I was hoping that their minds would be open enough to seeing a little bit of what was there. My mother was able to see the shapes of the animals. My son's friend could see parts of the shapes, and my son could not see any of them at the time. I was so happy that they confirmed the animal shapes, so I knew I wasn't just losing my mind. This brought me to a whole new world and a whole new journey in my life. I began to draw what I was seeing inside the crystals. I would take a still image of the crystal so I could zoom into it and meditate on the still photo. Then I would focus my mind call in spirit to aid me and bam it started to shape shift into these different scenes times realities and realms there was a different scene in every crystal i looked into and i was amazed as what at what i was able to see these different time periods scenes with people fairies extraterrestrials angels demons and signs with words to give me hints on what the time era was Uh, so i kept drawing and drawing as i continued to view what was in the crystals and now i have over 10 artist drawing books filled with crystal angel art drawings each and every drawing is healing in some way or another and they aren't fine art As a matter of fact, some look like a child drew them. But the symbolic meanings and value and metaphorical references that are channeled through them are absolutely amazing. The drawings from the angelic messages in the crystals didn't predict a future. Rather, they showed me where I was at the very moment I was in, in the present, and showed me what could happen if I changed the patterns in my life and made different choices. After about a year or two of drawing angel art, I decided to try to do it without the crystals. So again, I used sage smudge to cleanse the energy and created a sacred space in the the area I was in. 
I called upon the angels to protect and guide me while bringing any messages that were for the highest good of all concerned. After taking a few deep breaths and feeling spirit beside me, I would allow the pencil to go wherever it took my hand. I did not control the pencil. It was spirit taking hold of my hand and drawing these healing pictures. I would start to draw lines and shapes that made no sense at all until the picture was completely done. They were amazing and I was shocked that these messages were coming through me from spirit. I thanked Spirit for guiding me on this journey, but I was so confused still at the time. The more photos I took of the crystals, the more I became interested in finding what was within them and the meaning of each scene. This is when I started to draw out the photos of the crystals. I was using so much of my printer ink to print out the crystal photos, I thought to myself, How can I document what I'm seeing without having to print out all these photos of the crystals? The longer I meditated on the printed photo, the more they shift into different places. Spiritual beings, scenes, items, angels, animals, fairies, mountains, and scenery that is not normally seen with the physical eye. As a matter of fact, it was scenery that I've never even seen in this world before. So I decided to take my artistic abilities one more step outside the box and started to draw what I intuitively saw inside the crystals. First, I started experimenting by drawing on regular lined paper and then just placed them in a folder. But then when I began drawing, a couple crystals every day. I purchased an art book from Michael's Craft Store so my pages weren't all over the place and I was able to keep them in order, in date order of when I drew them. I noticed that as I continued to see and draw what was seen within the crystals, a story began to form. Some crystals would even give me a magnified visual of other drawings that I previously completed so it, so it would grab my attention. Some would be a continuation of other drawings, and some would include a short phrase or poem that would explain what the main message was within a drawing. I was completely amazed with the Angel Art Diaries and continued to draw daily. I wanted to strengthen my spirituality and be able to use my heart and third eye without having to use other tools to connect to the angels. It took a lot of practice, a lot of meditation, and many drawings before I was able to maintain my concentration. But I finally succeeded. Angel art diaries have come a long way since that first amethyst sparkled and shined its divine light into my eyes. After years of practice, identifying the meanings of symbols, pictures, numbers, colors, and also identifying the angels and what their specialties are. I am now able to provide the angel art diaries to people worldwide. They are now digitally drawn and form a celestial blend of colors that form symbols, images, angels, animals, and more. So now, I challenge you to ask to be reunited with the wisdom the knowledge and understanding that the Council of Light and our past selves have provided and hidden with light codes. These light codes reside within crystals, trees, herbs, and other things. You remember how our parents told us our imagination was running away with us when we saw something that didn't fit into the programming or conditioning here? (laughs) Well, now you know it was not your imagination. It is real. So I challenge you to be led towards the stones and crystals that you have coded for yourself to find. Now is the time, my friends. Now is the future. And you are ready to access your own energy, your own higher vibrational self. So I hope you enjoyed this podcast. And again, don't forget to go get the freebies. B 
because it's going to give you a lot of information about crystals. It has symbols that are found in their natural form. And you can really sit down and soak up this information because this is a lot of information, people. I don't expect you to remember this by listening to this podcast once. And we all need to come together and raise the vibrational energies on earth. And the more of us that do that, the higher the vibrations will be. The higher the vibrations become, spirit will be able to open up the door so they can come through and guide us even more. And we have to prepare our future generations so the world doesn't go to shit pretty much. (laughs) So go get your free printouts and your crystal information at www.spiritualonlinecourses.org forward slash free dash resources. And that's spiritualonlinecourses.org forward slash free dash resources. Now, don't forget you can get a free copy of my angels book as well. And that is at the home page or any page really it's um www.spiritualonlinecourses.org just go to where it says to enter your email address and you will be sent a link to access the copy of the nine amethyst angels book connecting and healing with angels that i wrote so i thank you all for tuning in and listening to me ramble on <laughs> I will talk to you all in the next podcast of Spiritually Speaking. Namaste. I always referred to my life as a cross between Jerry Springer and Oprah Winfrey. Now, I refer to my life as the Creator's divine plan to enhance the life of others. I was always the bruise on the apple of my parents' eyes. Getting in trouble running away, drinking and using drugs from a young adult up to the time I got pregnant with my son at 17 years old. After my son was born, I went right back to my old ways, almost losing my son in the crossfire. And that's just the beginning of my story. Maybe you have some struggles that you're going through, or maybe something from the past that you want to let go. Well, I have the perfect way that you can help yourself change your life for the better. I have online courses that range from spirituality to metaphysical to holistic online courses that can help you learn all the elements of spirituality and change your life for the better. You can visit www.counciloflight.net. That's www.counciloflight.net. Start changing your life now.